Hey folks, my name's Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery. Today we have an unboxing of a knife that I've wanted to check out ever since I first learned about it. To open it up, we're going to use this. This is the Best Tech Tulip, a tiny little knife, basically meant for box opening, designed by O Stop Hell. We're going to use this because what's inside here is also not quite as tiny, but a pretty darn tiny knife, basically meant for box opening and also designed by O Stop Hell. So let's give it a shot. Yep, we knives. Okay, how was this opened? There we are. All of the goodies that you typically find. Silica gel packet. And here we are. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I like this. This is the Wii Moat. Ooh, yeah. So, the reactions that I always saw in all of the videos about this is that people expected it to be bigger. From the pictures alone, it looked bigger. And so a lot of people bought it just kind of assuming it would be a full-size knife, not realizing that it's a pretty tiny knife. And I, I mean, people had like kind of like a, well, it's great, but I wish it was bigger reaction. No, 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 no. I knew exactly what size it was going to be. And that is exactly the size I wanted. I tend to be someone that just really enjoys smaller knives and I knew immediately I wanted to check this out. It has that same kind of angles everywhere, slightly futuristic, slightly post-apocalyptic look that Ostop Hell's knives tend to have. Um, and uh, I think that'll carry through. But whereas this one was all sharp angles, this one's going to be all swoop. Let's see how this flick goes. Ooh, ooh, that is delightfully snappy. Yeah, all swoop. So this blade is literally all belly. I mean, maybe this part right here would be flat, but this is all belly, which means it's going to be really, really good for just kind of like slicing cuts along surfaces where you might do a rocking motion. Okay, how does this feel in hand? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, this feels great. It is indeed a small knife, but with how much curve there is to this, you get a lot of cutting edge. Comes all the way back to the end. How do they do on that sharpening choil? Good. Yeah, the plunge grind's great on that. So you have a lot of distance here to cut with. The jimping, how's the jimping? Pretty good. Not the most traction, but that kind of level where it's like decent. And it just feels, wow, it really just feels like it fits in your hand. I have smaller than average hands, not like tiny hands, but I have smaller than average hands and I can get four fingers on this. I'm sure a lot of people would be sitting there closer to three or three and a half, but I can get four. But the bigger thing is just that the curve here means that this just fits in a way that feels secure still. Like you're kind of hugging it just the right way. What else do we wanna see here? How is this? Yeah, zero blade play. Nice solid lockup. Feels pretty thin behind the edge. And the blade stock and they're being deceptive, of course, because of the swedge along the top it means that this looks crazy thin, especially when you get it right here. But it's not um, its not terribly thick blade stock. I, I believe it's, I think, like 0.12 or something. I'm sure I'm off. I probably should have done any research at all before I opened this up, but I was just so excited to get it open. I love this sunken in backspacer. It looks really cool. It's just a neat effect. And the gold and black tone together is a very fun it's something you don't it's a pairing you don't see as often i'm noticing right away that they have a channel cut into the inside of the backspacer can you see that 
it's a, a swooped out channel. Now, on some knives, that's because that is where the blade sits. Do I have a flashlight nearby? Hey, yeah, look at that. The blade is indeed sitting in the channel of that backspacer. That is really, really nice. That is how they're able to get this thick and fat of a blade, which is not like it's a huge blade, but on such a small knife, it's, it's wider, into such a small handle space because they're able to push it right up to the edge. Okay, how's the closing? Definitely like shake home. Oh, it's so snappy. How, uh, how problematic is finger pressure on the lock bar? Ooh, yeah, no, this is one of those knives that like totally locks up. I'm assuming that that means that, yes, yep, yep, yep. So you can see we have, here, this is a nice white surface. What we're looking for here is how far the detent ball engages into the tang. And on knives that have um, finger pressure issues, it usually is always that they are sitting pretty deep, if not completely flush. And this one I think is Maybe not quite completely flush, but just about completely flush. Yeah, you can see it's not quite completely flush, but it's very, very deep seating. And what that has to do with is um, basically if it's if if the in detent ball sits really deep in the detent hole, then the angle that the blade is trying to slide over in order to push it out is is uh instead of being more like that it's like very very close to a 90 degree angle and so the amount of force that you're putting on the flipper tab the portion of that force that translates to actually pushing the detent ball out is really really small and so if you if if you have a situation like that putting pressure on the detent ball is going to mean that you need a lot of force to overcome it and this flipper tab is so small and so, I guess, kind of sharp, that that is not something you want to be pushing on really hard if you're not gonna be deploying it. So keeping your finger off that though, let's see. Yeah, keeping your finger off that is actually a little bit challenging. Let's see if I can come up with a good, reliable way of holding it. Yeah, kind of like that. Oh man, when you do flick it open though, that is snappy as heck. <laughs> What else do we got going on here? That's interesting. So this is the type of um, knife that has, wow, that's really kind of weird. So this is, <laughs> this is like a cross between internal and external stop pins. I'm, you don't see that very often. So what I'm talking about here is that the stop pin is affixed into the blade and traveling with the blade. And on an internal stop pin version of this, there would be a smile shaped channel cut into the handle of the knife. And on an external stop pin, the stop pin would be outside of the handle entirely, traveling around the outside of the handle and colliding into a space at the top. And this is actually kind of doing both. My lighting feels like it's not working well right here. Let's see if I can stay down here where I have better light, but zoom, yeah, there we go, that's better. So you can see that they do have a smile cut out, except it's just exposed on the outside. And so the stop pin starts as internal and ends as internal, but in the meantime, the path in the middle becomes a external stop pin for a brief moment. What an interesting design, you almost never see that. I suspect, let's look around this side. Yeah, so a consequence of that, of them cutting this back as far as they did, means that this right there is the detent hole. Now, luckily, the detent hole does get covered up 
once it's fully open. Although you can see with them having this entire space cut out to permit the uh, stop pins to travel, this is actually a pretty wide gap at the top. Um, so access to that hole is actually still very, very open, which means the possibility of getting gunk in here is higher. Wow, my lighting is really not working tonight. Yeah, you can see how easy it would be to get something in there and into that hole. Huh. This is really interesting. Honestly, this exposed bit here, the way it's doing and the way it starts and ends, but in the middle, that's pretty odd. I like the way that that lines up. Do you notice that? They have this extra deep little bit right there that lines up perfectly with where the handle goes. That's a nice little aesthetic tie-in. Oh yeah, and they've managed to line that up on the top too. Yeah, that's a really nice little aesthetic bit. Okay, let me zoom back out. What else do I want to look at on this? Um, looks like we're using pretty big hardware throughout. This appears to be T8s. That we have in... That looks like a T8. Yeah, that's a T8. Let's check. Yeah, that's nice. They're using T8 hardware throughout. I love this, that there's there's no branding here. You know, you have your Wii logo, but there's nothing written over here on the blade. Similarly, it just says O stop Hell Design, which means I'm not seeing the blade steel. Is the blade still hidden somewhere? It is. Oh, I love when they do that. It's not actually hidden. It's right. Man, I don't know if my lighting is going to support this. It's right there. There we are. Do you see it? S35VN. That is so subtle. Anyway, yeah, so this is S35VN blade steel. It's very lightweight. I wonder how lightweight it is. It feels incredibly light. This is another one of those things like with how small and how light it is, you get a whole heck of a lot of knife in such a tiny package. 2.04 ounces. Yeah, that's that's pretty incredible. What else is about this size? I believe that this is a 2.75 inch um, blade, which means it's probably here. Like this is the riv. Yeah, it's bigger than the riv, which means it's going to be bigger than that. But what else we got? Yeah, so these are about the same size, these are about the same size, and this is smack dab in the middle between them. But it's kind of, kind of just a little bit bigger than the Riv. And this is a one of my favorite sizes, like small, compact, but big enough to be useful. Oh, okay. I will post something later after I've actually played with this longer and taken more time to look at it. I'm, I'm legit impressed that this sits in here. That is just really cool. And that action is so freaking snappy. Okay, I will post a follow-up later, a small details review, but for now, this is pretty neat. <laughs> thanks, and thanks for watching. Have a nice day.